So friends, we are delighted uh, to have in our midst a very distinguished career diplomat. I'll tell you a little bit about him. But uh, before that, what I wanted to say is that we are fortunate that in the middle of our, uh, you know, Gandhi Winter School, we are able to dovetail or include a number of related events. Uh, so it is uh, not a matter of accident that Gandhi played a very important role in integrating the Northeast with the rest of India. We may not have time to talk about it now, but uh, he spent many uh, weeks, in fact months, in Assam. Assam was the undivided Northeast at that time. And many Gandhians continue to this day to work in that region. It's a hidden story. It's not a story you know very well. But it's been uh, written about and documented to some extent. So uh, I'm glad that we are able to somehow uh, integrate it. My point being that look east in some ways, or at least look northeast, started way back with Gandhi. And then Verrier, Elvin, and other people also played their role, other Gandhians. So we are happy to be able to integrate these two. But let me tell you a little bit about our distinguished guest today, Ambassador Rudy Vajri. He comes to us from Shillong uh, in the Northeast. And this uh, uh, thank you so much. This is the Yakyan, which you have heard of. This is Aspen Institute. Uh, you know, the Aspen Institute is, is a worldwide, uh, world-renowned institute with uh, branches uh, in different parts of the world. And the Ananta Foundation is funded by the Thapas. And this is a part of our ongoing collaboration with other organizations to bring distinguished visitors to IIS. Thank you so much, sir, for coming. Uh, Ambassador Rudy is uh, one of the best people uh, to give us this talk, not only because he's from the Northeast himself, but he served in very important positions in Nairobi, Budapest, Colombo, New York. He was our ambassador to Peru and also the High Commissioner <coughs> of Brunei, Brunei Dar es Salaam. It's a small sultanate, but it's very oil rich. He was also our ambassador to Colombia with, uh, and accredited to Ecuador and Costa Rica. He served in the United Nations, uh, in Cambodia, and he was also detained by the Khmer Rouge. And I learned somewhere that uh, Khasi, the language which is his mother tongue, is linked to Khmer. I didn't know that. There's some link there. Uh, and he was also deputed uh, by our former Prime Minister, Atal Bihari Vajpayee, uh, as the first Chairman of the Standing Committee of the Parliament on External Affairs. He's spoken on India in several, several places, including the Harvard Business School. Uh, he spent a lot of time in the Soviet communist system in Eastern Europe, and he also witnessed its collapse. He's had some first-hand experience of insurgency. Now, insurgency is important. I think he may touch on this even in the Northeast, as we know. But he's had first-hand experience of insurgency in Sri Lanka, Cambodia, Peru, Colombia, as well as the abortive coup in Nairobi. In fact, he was in New York when 9-11 happened. So we are fortunate that he's safe and sound with us. I was also in America during 9-11, when 9-11 happened, but very far, quite far from uh, any of the flashpoints. 
I was in the Midwest, which nobody wanted to hit. You know, it's a very boring part of uh, America. He's a fluent speaker of Spanish and uh, French, plus he has many other uh, uh, achievements to his credit, which uh, you know, I don't want to go on on about it because we want to listen to him. But I just wanted to say one more little thing. You know, the Lukis policy is supposed to have been started by Prime Minister Narasimha Rao. But I think it, it, it attained a certain kind of urgency during Prime Minister Atal Bihari Bajpayee's regime. And it's no accident that today we don't talk about look east, we talk about act east. But there's one little thing that I wanted to throw in, because I spent some time in Singapore, and I learned that it was Lee Kuan Yew who actually was inspiring uh, us and working behind the scenes to pay much more attention to the Northeast. And why was that? The simple reason was that it was Lee Kuan Yew who was the founding uh, Prime Minister of Singapore who wanted India to play a very important role in the Indian Ocean region to counterbalance China. Though he was Chinese himself, he wanted India to actually step into the shoes of the British Empire as a policeman, as the dominant power in the Indian Ocean. And, and Prime Minister Nehru said, we just don't have the resources. This is not the right time. And now we talk about Sagar Mala many, many years later. If I remember right, Sunanda K. Datta Roy wrote a book called Look East to Look West or something. And the book is something like that. I have a note of it somewhere. Uh, uh, I think uh, he used to write for the statesman. I don't know if you've heard of this gentleman. Uh, Sunanda K. Datta Roy. Has anybody heard of him? Yes. Yeah, yeah. I mean, here I'm talking about uh, uh, younger people here. So I think he wrote this book, Look East to Look West or something, you know? It's a very interesting book, uh, um, which I can tell you more about later. But without further ado, uh, I invite you, sir. Thank you so much for being with us. And if you wish to stand, uh, it's, uh, your, it's your choice, because your slides are there. Uh, I think I can sit here. No? You can. You yeah, certainly can. A small book here. Can be more interactive. But who will change your slides? Your slides can be changed from there. That was a solid okay. Right. It's all right. It's all well, right. he can change them for you if you prefer to sit. If you sit next, he changes them. He may, he may get back. No, no, no. 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 He'll do it. He'll do it. Please sit down. I think I'll do it. Sorry. Where do you change from? the director, in fact, for his kind words about me. But, uh, you know, I must confess that when I was told to come here, I was hesitant also, because to, uh, I have to undertake a long journey. You know. uh, I left Shillong yesterday at 6 o'clock in the morning. So I, I woke up at 4.30, and I was here last night at about past 12 o'clock. But let me tell you that today morning when I woke up, when I took the floor of this place by myself, I got so much energy that I feel very fresh, absolutely fresh. I can only take another journey, in fact. <laughs> so, so thank you so much. You know, it's been a, because coming to this uh, majestic, uh, regal building, call it what you want, it itself, uh, there's so much to learn and so much of energy about it. Thank you so much. Now, uh, the, you know, before I start on my presentation, I thought I'll just, you mentioned about uh, Lee Kuan Yew in Singapore. Uh, in fact, Lee Kuan Yew, uh, you know, one of the reasons he split from, in fact, he was part of Malaysia. Yes. And one of the reasons he split was that they were, they wanted it to be predominantly to Malay and Islamic at the same time. But then, the other part of it is that Singapore itself is to have majority Chinese also. But he said he could have, he, he could have made it a Chinese predominantly state, but it's, it doesn't work that way. 
And so today, in fact, you have, there is something called a Singaporean identity. So if you meet anybody who's a Malay, or an Indian for that matter, because you have a large number of Indians also in Singapore, they feel very Singaporean. Make no mistake. <laughs> Correct? So I thought that is something to, from a small country, and that's why Singapore is today. Okay, coming to my presentation, in fact, uh, another thing is which uh, struck me was that a uh, number of you here, besides being professors and scholars and researchers, uh, all put together, you're also from, some from Northeast also, so that makes it more interesting. Uh, okay, you know, I just touch it. The, I'll, I'll go, you see, because I, I've tried to make it as uh, exhaustive, as elaborate as possible. Because to enable, I thought, a uh, number of you to be able to get as much insight into, the, into what it was all about, this Hack East policy and Northeast. Now, I, you know, I went to your website and I found this. I was struck by it. And I thought I should, take, I should start with this. Uh, you know, the 60s were proving to be turbulent for India. The country which had hardly recovered from a devastating war was experiencing food insecurity because of the uncertainties in the domain of agriculture and had all the energies focused on the task of national integration. Then we come to this. This idea was stated in a great detail by the President of India, Professor Radha Krishnan, in his inaugural address. The greatest event of our age is the meeting of cultures, meeting of civilizations, meeting of different points of view, making us understand that we should not adhere to any one kind of single faith, but respect diversity of belief. That is what we should attempt to do. So I think this will be the, the guiding principle philosophy uh, throughout our discussion. And in fact, one, when I was a student, one of the books I read was the Recovery of Faith by Dr. Radhakrishnan. So that is how we go to the... I start with the map always because you know so that you have a, in your mind that where we are we're talking about. You have to, there's a northeast there, so you have, uh, you have, you know, Bhutan and Tibet and China on the north, and then on the east you have Myanmar, and in the south you have Bangladesh, but we have also have Nepal and Bhutan, and so uh, so that uh, then from the map itself, then we go to the map of ASEAN, where we are, all these neighboring countries, Myanmar and Thailand and Cambodia and the rest of them, there are ten countries. Now, I put this map because I thought it's important for you to have in mind we'll be discussing about it. And this is one of the, this is one of the reasons that perhaps uh, make the Look East policy to also be called the Hack East policy. Uh, we have given more emphasis to, to it because of what is happening here. Now, the, the, again, what does map say? It's, a, you know, the borders, we have 1,600 kilometers between India and Myanmar. <coughs> Those northeastern states, which then I mentioned about Chicken Neck or Silguri Corridor connecting rest of India with northeast is 22 kilometers. This is significant. Two angles of Aki's policy you have the external angle essentially concerning about enhancing relations of India as a whole with ASEAN and East Asia, the internal angle development and security of northeast India that makes it a viable gateway for the rest of India to ASEAN and East Asia. Now coming to this, three dimensions of the Axis policy, geopolitical and strategic security. This is exactly what comes back to the map, which I showed you earlier, the dispute in the China Sea. The situation in South China Sea, as shown in the map above, illustrates the significance of this. Then you have this China territorial disputes with <coughs> Vietnam, Philippines, Malaysia, and Brunei in the South China Seas. And you know why one of the reasons is not simply territory. It's also, it's oil rich. All these areas are very oil rich. So you see here, the South China Sea Arbitration Tribunal, this is where, uh, you know, the, the assertiveness of China has come. Where even this arbitration, the decision given by the tribunal, is not respected. So, Clear demonstration by China of its might and power. Indo Pacific. <coughs> this is a 
basically it's a, a concept started by, in fact it was Obama, then Donald Trump also, but Donald Trump of course being Donald Trump, you don't know he blows hot, he blows hot, he blows cold about it. But still the concept now is being vigorously pursued by Japan. And uh, Indo of course implies the inclusion of India in the security architecture uh, defined by the US, which means more role for India in the strategic convergence and religion. Uh, Quad. The US have also mooted this idea for Quad, which would include besides the US, Japan, India, and Australia. China has taken exception to both the Indo-Pacific concept as well as the Quad as a gang up against China. Moreover, ASEAN countries themselves are not excited about this concept because they don't want to do anything that would antagonize China. And what China is doing, in fact, uh, with the, with the, even with these countries which they have it, which is, is not dispute, is to try and solve them bilaterally. And in fact, like Philippines, for instance, is, it, it's, it's, a, it's a major uh, loser in the whole thing. At the same time today, I think the president of Philippines is one of the closest to China. Concepts which we bring, of course, down into a confront with China. I will talk about it. Uh, economic, trade, commerce, technology. China has been leading this formation of this regional comprehensive economic partnership, which would include ASEAN countries and India. This was to counter the US-led formation of the TPP. The TPP, of course, is more or less to come now. But, of course, I have talk about it because Donald Trump doesn't believe in multilateralism. He believes in anything to be bilateral. India has taken its own time in joining the RCEP and protracted negotiations are going on. The perception in India is that the business community in India is not particularly keen on free trade associations or FTAs. So, so you can you can well imagine where we are because I want you to get some, some understanding on this because uh, this is important in fact uh, because we are this nature of ambivalence the way we we are neither here nor there. So, whereas increasingly we are becoming part of the global trade at the same time. So, if multilateral truth, in fact, I will, I'll be mentioning about it, if the, the WTO is becoming more and more, is becoming weaker, in fact, uh, what do we do about it? Now, ethnic, linguistic, culture, the civilizational history and sharing of heritage between India and Southeast Asia has become a subject of deep and wide research and study. I think maybe some of you may have already done it here. The influence of Buddhism which went to India, for example, the majestic Ankara in Cambodia, I had the, the, the opportunity of visiting that place during the travels there. And uh, then we go to the you know, other influence of Sanskrit and the rest of it, Hinduism in Indonesia. And then I'm rushing this part because there will be later on, which we'll have will take more time to discuss. Then the ethnic, linguistic, and cultural gods and lineages between the people of Southeast Asia and Northeast. In fact, from Northeast, you can say, uh, uh, Professor Paranjpa, you mentioned about my own Khasi tribe with the Khmer. It's, it's very, you know, it's very true. And uh, in fact, other than some German who has written something about the language part, there's nothing much written about it. Uh, same case with uh, the Milos. In fact, that same bamboo dance of theirs is, is also the same thing in Sarawak, I, know, I saw in Malaysia. And so the Nagas also the same thing, even from Amarcha, the same thing. Uh, so this is some facts about ASEAN India trade. I, I thought I should mention this because this will give you an idea of where we are. It's really you know, progress by leaps and bounds. But the question is that how much has Northeast benefited out of it? It's in fact, some data is there which I'm not, uh, it, it's so, it's so uh, microscopic that I don't, I don't feel the importance of mentioning it here. So, but then with ASEAN, India has the, so many other projects, we are culture, science, technology, space, environment, so we, we have really improved our relations with ASEAN uh, in a big way, in all areas practically. ASEAN and the Northeast. <coughs> now this part, I want to say something more here. 
<coughs> it has been 25 years since the ASEAN-India Dialogue Partnership was launched under the Peace Policy. It is almost five years since the ASEAN-India Partnership for Peace and Prosperity was elevated to strategic partnership. Now, what has, what has happened to this in terms of this relationship with ASEAN countries? So this, these are some of the things we have to discuss. ASEAN and the Northeast. The challenge for Northeast is to benefit from the growing partnership. Now, out of, since, since the Blue East policy was launched, uh, now at this policy, a lot of projects have been, either they have been uh, announced, some of them have been, uh, you know, started underground, some of them have half progress, some are three-fold progress, some are no progress. So <coughs> I thought I should mention about all this so that you, you are able to, you know, to understand to what extent we are the gap between what has been written, what has been announced, uh, and implementation. That, that is, in fact, is the, the key about progress in the Northeast as far as that is concerned. And so this is a major thing about a light, a trilateral highway, uh, which is from connecting Moray border and Manipur to Tamu border in Myanmar, and all the way to Thailand. It's almost 2,000 kilometers. We'll talk more about it. This is, in fact, the aim of this is, Charlton is to connect Delhi all the way to Bangkok. But uh, that's a dream. Now, Karagam, this is another major project. You see, this is not another major project. In fact, both this trilateral highway and Karagam is being done by the Ministry of Economics. And it's a very, very challenging project because of the, the terrain and the, you know, all that they have to go through. Is it okay? Yeah, yeah, perfect. Oh, Everything is good. Okay. No, no, that was the first thing, so I was trying to find out why somebody is mobile, I guess. Now, uh, this is, you see, 539 kilometers from Kolkata all the way to Sitwe, and another 158 kilometers from Sitwe port <coughs> to this Kaladan River in Myanmar, to Palitwa Jetty, and all the way, then all the way, to, the, the idea of this is to connect Kolkata, one part of India, with Mizoram, another part of so it's a very challenging task. Uh, we'll come to that a little more. This is, in fact, roughly, you know, which is, we'll show you the map, which it starts in Kolkata and then it gives you distance all the way to connect all the way to Mizoram. Now, other projects impacting Northeast. I thought I should just mention this. Why? Because, again, as I said, what is in theory and what's in practice. Now, this is, Transforming corridors with Cambodia, Myanmar, Laos, Vietnam. In fact, uh, there was uh, in the budget 1915, sorry, 2015, by the finance minister, uh, he did mention an amount for this allocation uh, to, to start something called a special SPV, a special purpose vehicle for this. So, uh, working on India, Myanmar, Thailand, not of the This is it will it will show you more and more that all these things are there, but to what extent we are able to implement. implement it. Allocation of US one billion dollar for physical digital connectivity. This announcement was made by the Prime Minister himself. Then uh, uh, this. I, again, I mentioned to you about this special, uh, this uh, 500 crores that was uh, mentioned by the finance minister. Then you have this Northeast Industrial Development, it was suspended for a while, now it has started again. Other related projects in Assam, Mizoram, Sitwe Special Economic Zone, Sitwe Gas Pipeline, all the way, all these, you know, a whole lot of them, hydropower in Myanmar, Agartala Feni Chittagong Highway, India Myanmar. Uh, highway and then Paletto Chika, this whole lot of them, all this. Aizal, Pipong Highway to Myanmar, Tunnel under Sela Pass on the way to Tawang. This, this is a great thing, great idea. But uh, you know, it's, uh, in fact, it is fascinating. 
coming to talk about it, uh, that uh, your guy told me today, I didn't know the number, that the British managed to do those tunnels all the way from Calcutta, 150, 123? Is that correct? Five, three. Huh? 103. 103. Thank you. And then, what, fasc what, what fascinated me was that this building itself was done in four years. So, anyway, there are issues to it. So, air connectivity, this Udan scheme to connect. This is great because, to, you know, uh, you need uh, marine connectivity, you need land connectivity, you need air connectivity. That's the only way because to, uh, I go to Bangkok, it is two and a half hours. I go to Delhi, it's also two and a half hours. <laughs> so, well, there's no direct flight. <coughs> In fact, you know, I must tell you this fate of air, airport in Omuro is Shillong. Now, I feel very, when I talk to people, in fact, Shillong used to be the capital of the entire Northeast. <coughs> uh, not really the capital of the entire Northeast, it was the mischief center for NIFA, for the rest of those uh, frontier states, uh, those days, but also the educational center. So, but the, the, the sad thing is that this Omuro airport, what I just saw in the papers today, because the court is telling the government what to do. The court is telling now the, 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 uh, the, the airlines what to do. They should report to the court. It's come to that level. It is really, it's really sad. Now, connectivity objectives. Uh, involving India is involving in causing more regional cooperation for taking advantage. So we have the other organizations like the BINSTEC, you know, Bay of Bengal Initiative, uh, multilateral sector with technology, economic cooperation with Bangladesh, India, Sri Lanka, sorry, and the rest <coughs> of them. Then we have the East India Summit, connecting more with China itself, Japan and South Korea, the, Gan the Ganga Me Mekong Cooperation, Shanghai. There's some, some progress here in this, in fact, I must say. But then it's it's not, the point is that there's a lot of things happening with India also, but it's not happening within the Northeast, or with the Northeast. It's, uh, then the, the Asian Highway Network, of course that is again coming to this trilateral highway. Trans-Asia Railway, which is a big project in, mainly in Arunachal. Still railroads, I think, uh, Professor, you know, there. in fact we've done some, some, uh, yes. You know, solid work on this. Maybe you can tell us more about it. But I thought I should mention about this, and because to, why not restore it? That's my only point. The Stillwell Road is named after U.S. general in the Second World War, and uh, there has been a demand to rejuvenate the Stillwell Road to open trade and commerce between the Northeast and China. BRI. <laughs> now, this is the baby of the supreme leader. <laughs> And then, of course, to Martin Dollar, there's a lot of debates and discussions about it. India stayed away from the GRI <coughs> summit held in May 2017. It was attended by 129 countries. So that's the question, whether it was a good thing that we stayed away or was a wrong thing that we stayed away. So this is, we'll talk about it. So we stayed away because one of the corridors of GRI is the China, Pakistan, Islamic Corridor, which passes through Pakistan, occupied Kashmir. India objected that this was an infringement on India's sovereignty and territoriality. But the question is that by staying away from that without sending anybody at all, whether it was a good decision. Okay, BCIM. This is something which I myself am very interested in because it concerns directly the Northeast, one of the corridors, which connects Bangladesh, China, India, and Myanmar. And Bangladesh is very interested in it, and so is Myanmar. It will be called, in fact, or the other name is Kolkata Kunming Corridor. And I believe the Chief Minister of West Bengal itself is very interested in it. Engaging with China. Uh, <coughs> you see, this is where, this is where uh, we, the IM Shivam, I'm a neighbor of IM, by the way. Is my neighbor. So I do get involved with the activities also. Uh, they have been having these programs with these universities in China and they are very happy. Now, 
The students there, let me tell you, are from the rest of India. There may be one or two from Northeast, because it's all India. They're from the rest of India. And they feel strongly that why not China having more interaction with China? So uh, this, in, this, this IM is the only one which has a, a program to learn Mandarin. It's the only one. A China conclave was held at the IM Shiva in 2016. Several experts, academicians, institutions, and corporates from India participated. Sad that Chinese listed participants would not pass because of visa issues. So till today, not one single Chinese has ever stepped foot at IM Shiva. Or for that matter, any institution there. Now, I don't know whether this is, you want to do business with them, but then you are scared of it. I don't know whether it's the correct uh, attitude to take. India, Japan, Northeast Forum. Now, this is something which uh, has progressed quite a bit with Japan. It's a byproduct of growing wider and deeper social vision and the strategic convergence factor between the two countries. Uh, I must tell you, it, uh, it's, I, I'm mentioning it here. Japan investing in infrastructure through its Jaika, education exchanges, IRIS program, a lot of things have happened. And recently, in fact, there was this cherry, they, regularly now we have this cherry blossom festival. Mm -hmm. Because Shivam has a lot of cherry blossom. So you have Sakura is the name of cherry blossom, flowers, you know, these trees in, uh, in uh, Japan. So this took place, in fact, I, I chaired the interactive session where the Japanese ambassador came from Delhi and the chief minister was also there. So uh, I chaired that, that, that session. Now, Japanese ambassador spoke about inviting Japanese private sector into investing in agriculture sector, food processing, tourism, opening up Japanese language courses, sports, <coughs> Tokyo Olympics 2020, and Indian National Games 2022 in Meghalaya. But I must tell you that the way things are moving in Meghalaya, I am scared about it. Yes. And the Japanese, uh, the Japanese, the, the, you know, they don't know what to do. They want to help. So the way we are moving, it's, 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 it's really, really sad. Ready for assist in setting startups and smart cities also. This was mentioned by the Japanese ambassador. So again, I read a report about uh, an understanding, with, uh, you know, at the one summit between PM Modi and Xi Jinping for a joint Sino-Japanese investment in Northeast. I would, I would, I would, I hope that this is correct. Then you know the, 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 it will become part of the BCIM. Now, Taiwan and Assam T, I read about this. A team of researchers from Taiwan was at Assam recently, and they're interested to develop this partnership with Assam and T. So, also, and to, 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 to create something called T tourism. But again, we, you know, we have, even with Taiwan, we are not very free of it in terms of doing business with Taiwan. Mm -hmm. Taiwan is so ready you know, to invest. Now, the, I thought, I'll start with some good news about parties, because we'll go to the bad news later on. Uh, insurgency is now practically non-existent within the territory, the territory of India. Uh, among <coughs> other things, the cooperation of the Asani, Asina government in Bangladesh was critical to the process. So all these insurgents, Events which they have in Bangladesh, you can, you can say that they're practically finished now. But they are running away to Myanmar. Myanmar. I'll come to that later. So you have the result to that is more and more domestic tourists are coming to the north from in the rest of India. It's a it's, it's a big it's a big business now. In fact, it's becoming a there's a lot of pressure, in fact, on some spots because the infra is not there, the structure is not there. More and more visits by PM and other central men. Now, I must say, give credit to this current PM. He has made a maximum visit to the North East. What, whatever happened, whether it, anything has happened much on ground, or <coughs> but he has made much more. So are other ministers also. Influence of technology, Bollywood extras increasingly bridge the cultural gap. 
So, uh, it's, it's in fact, uh, it's amazing that from Northeast today, you have them uh, working in the volume industry at different different capacity in different levels. State governments in Northeast are talking more about the at peace policy. Some of them have started departments on at peace policy, as some in particular have done it. Other state, they have some cell or they have an officer, judge, something like that. Now, you have these products which they have potential to export. This turmeric from Megalia, the ginger from Arunachal, the ethnic travel and crafts from all the states, especially Nagaland. So, uh, it's, but one problem we face, you know, export from what is also volume. When it comes to the scale part of it, uh, I found this when I was abroad also in the past, we're trying to do it, but we're not able to meet the delivery volume. So it becomes too expensive. <coughs> Whereas the demand, suppose if it's for 1,000 hats, mm -hmm. we can only supply 100, you know, it doesn't, you know, so that is, that's the, we face these issues. <coughs> now, I, I thought I should, this is one of the good news, the movie will reach, you know, the, the uh, see how beautiful it is. It's going to be inaugurated by the PM, I think, shortly now. <coughs> this is, will connect <coughs> Arunachal Pradesh with Dibruga. <coughs> Assam and cut the distance to less than 100 kilometers from 500. It's a very, very major project. It is the longest rail road bridge in India. <coughs> almost five kilometers. Now, but see here, the foundation stone was laid in 1997. The construction started in 2002 and will be inaugurated on the on today, I mean, on the December 25th, 2018. So it, you can see it. Yes. Sorry? <coughs> yes, it has to be. Yeah, okay. that, that's why. So, uh, now, Bhutan Hazarika said, this is the, the bridge, named after the legend uh, <coughs> artist, uh, singer of Assam called Bhupan Adarika. Now, Lohit, over Lohit River in Amsterdam Pradesh, which connects with Parambutra Assam, it's almost 9.50 kilometers. Construction started in 2011 and completed. And this is remarkable. That's why I think I should mention it. That we can do something. It's something like, if you look uh, like the Delhi Metro, I, I suppose most of you have traveled a bit. And uh, if we can do something like that, why can't we do more of it? Delhi Metro is is uh, is better than the New York Metro in terms of even cleanliness for the matter. Spit and span. Why can't we do it elsewhere? So it, it means we can do it, but somewhere somehow we have to fix things, you know. Uh, so th this is it. I, I thought I should mention it. Uh, so that is the Dhola Satya that is supposed to be the other name for this setu, which is, you know, I just put it on the map, the reading up here. Now, of course, the strategic importance of all this is the Bhupendra Dharika Seto Dhola Satya Bridge has been designed to handle the weight of these tanks, the Arjun tanks, and the <coughs> So we can do all that engineering. But don't forget, all the material supplies come from China. <laughs> the basic, the basic, some of the, 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 the main steel supply, the main thing, a lot of things come from China also. Since the China-Indian war, China has disputed India's claim to Arjun. <coughs> okay. Now, government of India and North East, this is something which I thought this should be the focus of today's discussion. Uh, from the time the look east policy, which is LEP, and the uh, now IT policy, what has happened? Ten percent. That's what, in fact it was Mr. Vajpayee who made this mandatory. Ten percent out of the budget of each ministry to be spent on northeast. Has it really happened? If it has, why and why? So there was this calculation made. You know, the, in fact, this this was. This calculation was made to rupees 30,000 crores was spent in a year for population of 32 years. This was Jairam Ramesh, who was a minister. He came and spoke, and he mentioned this. So you multiply 30,000 crores by 32 million. How much you have benefited by giving them in cash? 
So as direct grant of 85% for Arunachal Pradesh and 51% for Assam, the other states in between those with percentage like Meghalaya, I think 70%, uh, Mizoram and other, I think 80, like that. So, so this. Yeah, Arunachal Pradesh gets the highest, 85%. So now, uh, from 2014, when the ACTIS policy was announced, it was reported that rupees 90,000 crore, I think this announcement was made by the PM himself, for development of roads and railway infrastructure was announced. Now, besides investment plans for telecom power, civil aviation, and shipping, so you have these announcements, huge, huge ones. <coughs> Missions, this also, you know the, Atal mission, renovation, urban transformation, to what extent it has happened. Then the smart city mission. Nine, the 90% funding support from the center as against one third in other states. This is, I, 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 was, I checked it the other day. It is not, because the minister for urban development, Mr. Hardeep Puri is a colleague of mine. In fact, we work together in three places. You and also? So, yes. So I know him very well. And I met him and he told me, no, we have not agreed. It was 50-50. The, the state must learn to find the road resources. That's, I, I <coughs> mentioned about this because I, I, I saw some report which is not accurate, I think. Now, NITI Forum for Northeast. Aim to ensure sustainable. Now, you have within the NITI, you have this Forum for Northeast. It's become very active. But to what extent it, is, it, it, can, it can really lead to tangible results. So they have mentioned about these five development missions, horticulture, tourism, food processing, bamboo-based handicrafts, and medium-scale industries. PMs want to establish a regional Niti Ayuk Forum in Northeast. Then there is a concept of HIRA, highways, internet, railways, and railways. So it is wonderful, really grand, if we can achieve. So from rupees, this this much to there's been something this this is some of these I saw you know I read the report some of these uh, which came out in the newspaper so it's very difficult because you have I'll come to this later on but still these are announcements made governance has also improved this was said by the uh, the uh, minister for uh, for donor. So I hope this is, is correct. Now, but then again, some time ago the donor minister said about non-utilization of funds by the Northeast and non-submission of these utilization certificate of funds. Now why non-submission? Because it was a lot of it is not accountable. So when they don't submit these utilization certificates, then they don't get the other funds. So you have this situation. Then there's a delay in land acquisition. For all these whatever central projects, central government projects, the job of land acquisition is the job of the state governments. But there, is, there, there, there are some issues because, of, because there are tribal lands, there's issues of ownership, there are issues of other issues also. And, but the main thing is lack of political will also. Because some protest is there, then you don't go about it. So you have this, that in fact, uh, I participated in this, you know, Fiki Northeast. And a book, in a book which was done at that time, it says that Supi's 48,000 crores funds were not utilized. And they were not utilized because they were not able to submit this utilization. So a technical thing like this, you see? So the funds also not fine. Even though a lot of it's there. So operational difficulties, land acquisition, I mentioned about it. Then we have national calamities, <coughs> landslide, mudslides. Then unofficial tax. Now it has been a practice. In fact, when you talk to these people in the defense, there's a seminar, in fact, on a similar subject conducted by the Assam Rifles. Uh, where, you know, it was difficult because, like in Nagaland especially, where this unofficial tax means even bureaucrats have to pay. Because they know exactly how much is paid. If it's a, a lakh rupees, then 10% should go. 
So it's a standard practice. It's not written anywhere. But everybody has to pay. So to whom, sir? Pay to the underground. It's 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 extortion. It is. Yeah. It is. So today, today you have this extortion. Still, these insurgents you have about in Manipur, you have about these 22 insurgent groups operate on Kohima in front of Moray Highway. Some have checked posts and charged from every So this is the pro this was mentioned to me by uh, an official of the Indian Chamber of Commerce based in Guwahati. The difficulties of trading with Myanmar, which I'll, I'll mention to you later. Also. So these are some of the ground realities and how to deal with it. And the reason again is because the state government is not strong enough also to deal with it. And so you have this thing, whereas the, from the defense, they have to do their job also. So these problems stay with Myanmar. Now, Myanmar being the frontline country for us in the Northeast, and for ASEAN for that matter, for anything you want to do. But the unofficial trade is 20 times more than official. And 90% of the goods from Myanmar, 10% from India. So you can well imagine, and, and goods from Myanmar are basically goods from China. Now it's even goods from Vietnam. Most of these medical supplies today, you'll find, they're coming from uh, health medical related, coming from Vietnam. So transshipment issues in Moray, Tamu border, whereby you know you have to shift if a truck carries consignments from from India. At Moray, small vehicles have to take it and ship it to the other. The truck from India cannot go there, it's cannot cross. <coughs> so this, you know, this, uh, there's so much of inconvenience about it. And the transaction in US dollar only. And the unofficial, one dollar is rupees 180. <laughs> what is the official today here? We have? 70. So, and this is, it may be more now, I don't know. So, as per minister, our Ministry of Commerce, 600 products can be traded with Myanmar. In practice, only rice and spices. Because of these So, trade with Myanmar. Recently, I think it's only took place about a month ago, the inauguration of the international Myanmar-India border recently has led to acceptance of e-visa at the border in town. Myanmar allowed 13 nights of stay in Myanmar, but has to exit back through Tamu only. So if you enter through Tamu, you have to come back via Tamu. If you enter Yangon, you have to, come, you have to leave via Yangon. So we have these issues now. Then there are several policies in Myanmar which have vested interest in military control for a long time. For example, <coughs> second-hand vehicles are allowed and dumped into Myanmar from Japan, Korea, China, prevent scope to export vehicles from India, which, uh, which can go in a big way. Incidentally, I take pride in saying one thing in my, maybe I should, it's there in my curriculum vitae, that uh, the first export of Maruti took place when I was first at commerce in the So there was a, a Maruti car with me, whom I would give it to the buyers there for, for test. So that happened in the, in the early East. It was the first export of cars in India. Problems in Northeast for at East policy. Okay? At Northeast is not homogeneous at all. There are about 220 languages and dialects are spoken. In Nagaland itself, you have so many tribes who speak different dialects. So in fact, in Nagaland, they speak something called Nagamis, which is uh, another version of Asmis. So state governments over preoccupied with local issues and lack of political will. Pressure groups or so-called NGOs of all kinds behave like parallel governments and survive on indirect line of extortion. So they are the people now, even the surrender, now from the Ulfa group in Assam, they become sulfa, surrendered alpha. <laughs> so they have become, you know, uh, they have become extortionists. It's happening in other states also. So you have these issues there. And in fact, uh, 
In Meghalaya, there was a railway line to connect Guwahati with another place called Vardiha. The pressure group there, they said they don't want because of, they don't want other people of India to influx. Now you are in Simla here. Uh, the train has arrived <coughs> in British time. Um, you are okay. Perfectly all right. It's, uh, you know. But there, because why? The truck owners, they pay money to these people. And the government is not strong enough to go about it. Then you have this interstate infrastructural connectivity still a long way to go. I travel, uh, when I travel, I go for lectures in Northeast. And I take, I, I make it a point to go by road wherever possible. And the conditions of road, some improvement has taken place, I'm not saying it's not, but still a lot more has to be done. Suppose if I, I went to Arunachal last time, uh, at least halfway, not a little, little less, less than halfway, from Assam to Arunachal, uh, it was really bad. Really bad. But not because the money is not there. It has a lot to do with state governments also. Now, again, you know, the ASEAN Study Center launched in August 2015 after PM had announced in 2014 that Kamalum is now, what happened? I was part of it in the sense that I was asked to be in the working committee. But then, what happened? Again, this comes on the Ministry of Election Affairs. And again, they just stop it, and then um, it's not functioning anymore, but it's becoming part of the Alasa Department of the uh, Northeast Indian University. So why even announce it? Why even start it? This, you see, it, 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 people then think, uh, you know, serious. There are some people, the generalists especially, who say that the, ne the next time they come and have a seminar on Aggie's policy, we'll hold a protest. <laughs> So the last India ASEAN summit, January 25, uh, 2000 in New Delhi, the joint statement issued had no mention of the Northeast. <laughs> Unlike Japan, which it did. That's because Japan took interest. Japan is really interested. Then you have the border issues between states. There's a lot of border issues between, which especially to, uh, you know, this land, my land, hmm. boundary, all that. Tendency to blame the center for LTV. Then corruption and lack of transparency. Then you have this schizophrenia kind of towards center. And then insularity also that, again, I, I told you about uh, the impact of Bollywood and the impact of other cultural things. But at the same time, you still have, uh, you, have you, you don't trust that people from the rest of India should come. So. Then traditions and thinking versus modernization in wants and desires. Everybody wants fancy cars, fancy, you know, the latest of things, mobiles especially. But uh, people will say, please don't interfere in what we do. I have, where I stay, in fact, I, the Gaura, because these are, they say they are, we have traditional institutions, but then they don't have elections for, for electing. So, they do the primitive way, which I object strongly. But they want this direct funding from center, which the panchayats are getting. In fact, uh, here today, I was talking to the driver who was taking me around, and he says that uh, one of the things which is happening here is because the direct funding to the panchayats is helping a lot. And people are becoming more, and in fact, this. Uh, Online tendering, even in the panchayats for projects, is a very good thing. So I'm glad to hear this about Himachal. I think I should tell my state to come and learn from Himachal. Shalom to Shimla. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Now, uh, Act East policy in the limbo. See, see this editorial in the Shalom Times, which is just November 28. It says, static LEP of the Congress regime was renamed AEP by Modi. This change in nomenclature has hardly added any traction to the policy. No one has critiqued this policy because academicians stand to gain from discussions around it. That I can come and talk. So, so this is, you see, this is a leading newspaper in the Northeast. OK, 
Okay, I'll go to the next one. Editorial Assam Tribune. This happened on December 6. Okay? Developing Northeast Niti Forum met on December 4. Northeast met on December 4. And this is a journal in Assam Tribune. Assam Tribune is the biggest, has the biggest circulation in Northeast. The ground reality in the Northeast warrants more than rhetoric to accelerate its development process. The days ahead will test the sincerity of New Delhi even as it mounts platitudes on putting the region on the fast track of development. This is coming from the leading news Center Northeast issue, issue of this, I just told the director about it, ASPA. And, uh, inner line permit. Yeah, then the inner line permit. I, 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 do I, any one of you understand inner line permit? Mm -hmm. It is actually, the full name of it is called the Bengal, uh, that time, no, when the, during British time, the whole Northeast was under Bengal presidency. So it was called Bengal uh, Presidency in the line something, regulation, some 18, I forgot the year or so. And mind you, uh, it's still practiced today in Nagaland, for instance. Even Arunachal. Oh, Arunachal also. Yes, Arunachal also. Yeah. And in Denmani, in Manipur and Meghalaya also. Yes. Mizoram. Mizoram also. Yeah. also. So this is the things which we, you know. Uh, then you have this. This NRC, the National uh, Registration Citizenship, which has happened in Assam. I don't know, I hope it's solved. The, I hope the idea was to find a solution, but I hope it doesn't create more problems. And then, worse is the Citizenship Act Amendment Bill 2016. Because it says that all non Muslims can come and stay in India from Bangladesh and Afghanistan and Pakistan. So, the question today is, they are being opposed by all parties there. All parties are opposing it, including allies of the BJP. So, you see, that my point is that we are, I don't know, doing something without proper thinking, I think, knowing the parts of the people. So, you create more problems. Then you have these things, like patronizing, condescending, that, that the center or the people of India for that matter, let me tell you, even people from India, uh, when they come from to, to, to Northeast, they, they have some kind of patronizing at the same time, and also condescending that. These are backward people, these are, you know. And it shows especially, because I'll come to, I'll, maybe I'll come to that later, but I should mention it now. What is happening to Northeast people in, as in Delhi? How they're being discriminated. Even Bangalore. Even Bangalore. I don't know whether you get to see it here, but it's a big news in Northeast when these things happen. And uh, in fact, it happened in, in one case where this uh, law, something, there was this uh, uh, student from Arunachal who was killed. And then there was a lady lawyer from Northeast who took up, she practices in Delhi. And she went to the court, Azari court, for the hearing. And she was abused by her fellow lawyers. Now, if, if fellow lawyers can think like that, you can well imagine you know, what is the rest of the man on the street think. So this is something which, you know, this psychological gap which we have is something which, which is very important. And uh, there is something called the Besbara Committee Report. Mr. Besbarwa, in fact, I know him very well. Uh, he he's a retired. In fact, he was student secretary. He gave a report where what should be done by both sides, you know, and so many ways. But I don't know to what extent it is that most reports, of course, it's been dusty. Now, the Indian private sector not coming to northeast. Uh, for every Fiki CII meet that we have, it's very difficult to get people. So this is, this is where I'll come later. That China is ready to come, Taiwan, why don't you allow them to come? Whoever wants to come. Because at the end of the day, yes, government uh, can do the infrastructure, making roads and uh, airports and you know, ports and all that. But most of the, let's say, food processing, if the private sector doesn't come in, there's no way you can go ahead. 
So the, in my state, Meghalaya, the chief minister is very keen to do something for the jackfruit. There's a lot of jackfruit there. Uh, but the agriculture secretary, K.N. Kumar, brilliant officer, he told me that, look, if it's a private sector, <coughs> can come in, there's nothing we can go ahead with this. Government doesn't have the money also to invest. So this is the, so more and more, now what I suggest is more and more water huts needed. Now, you know, uh, we must not forget that the Northeast was one of the richest part of India before partition. Why? Because we traded that time freely with Burma, that part, with uh, erstwhile East Pakistan, that part. But the partition made us poor. But it stopped completely. In fact, you know, the Brahmaputra used to be a, a, a lifeline for transportation. But after the partition, it was stopped. In fact, today when you want to revive them in Bangladesh, a lot has to be spent on dredging. Because there's been so much of silk collected. So we don't have the money to do that dredging. So this is the, So why not go back to border huts? Allow them to move freely to do it. So, but then we have reservations with that. Bridging the gap, psychological, I talked to you about it, cultural also. Then you need, I, I suggest something like, you know, uh, the good thing was about Nagaland was that there's something called Naga Rajam, and the, which is a very good thing. Uh, I think they've done something with Manipur. They should do more in other states also. In fact, the, some of the army officers who are doing the recruitment, they are holding, I read the Assam rifles, I talk to them because they, I meet them uh, regularly. And how to, you know, to recruit. And by the way, I am, by the way, it's not mentioned, I am president of the Ram Meghalaya, we organize marathons. And we find a lot of boys from rural areas, especially girls also, by the way. Uh, the, the, the very, not from cities, they are more, they are, they are fit, they are tough, and we are one to, we are trying to help them to be recruited in the, in the army. And by the way, you know, there was a, a something called uh, Ran in the Himalayas here, in, in Manali. There was a, from my place, he broke the record, by the way. He came and ran, we sponsored him. So, uh, then, another thing is, I suggest, that, you know, after 1991, when the liberalization of India took place, economic uh, liberalization by in the time of Mr. Narasimha Rao and Dr. Manmohan Singh was finance minister, a lot of states that time have taken like Tamil Nadu, I mean, sorry, uh, Andhra Pradesh, of, of course Tamil Nadu also, and uh, Maharashtra, Karnataka. They came in a big way, the chief ministers, to campaign for foreign investment. Now, uh, we have not, for us it was, we have not, you know, we are far away from that. Because why? The, one of the things about Northeast is this, this thing, you see, is depending on the center. And the center has not said, you better learn to also create your own resource. Or <coughs> it's beginning now, they are revising it, but it should have started earlier. And so what we need is also sub-state diplomacy, especially with neighboring countries. Allow these states to be more involved. This, in fact, sub-state diplomacy was uh, advocated strongly by our former Vice President, uh, Dr. Amin Atzai. He uh, he's spoken very well on this. We should do it. Because, to, you know, affinity culturally, language, things like that, it helps. Then systemic issues. This is something which, you know, again about India. I said that uh, India, for me, having worked abroad, that a lot of abroad, India has a good image. A good image, why? Because of the IT brains, everywhere. But I say that when it comes to concrete project on the ground, what we, most of our delay takes place because we cannot act on it. Individually, we made the, the best in the world, the brilliant, the most brilliant in the world, but we cannot act collectively. This is the big problem. 
And this thing about Northeast also multiple agencies. You have the PMO, you have Donor, MHA, MEA, MOD, MOC, Line Ministries, NEC meeting now, NEC. <coughs> the Secretary NEC the other day just told me that, you know, so I, so I said, I'm coming to Vietnam. How, the, the, how is it? He says, you know, we are, no, we are nowhere now. It's been, it's been reduced, in spite of the fact that PM made an announcement that uh, to upgrade it. So you have this, uh, I said, come out something with act within Northeast policy first. Okay, the hard reality is China, I've already talked about it. And foreign policy challenge, this is coming to an end now. Uh, for us, for India, I think uh, we should exercise strategic autonomy. Of course, you have been talking by knowing how to manage shared interests with both US and China. And I go back to the Vajpayee, Mr. Vajpayee, which I call him the last statesman of India. Help shaping global multipolar world with growing economic and military power. Leveraging India's democracy and pluralism and diversity to more middle ground global. And this is the way that we can leverage on what is happening now between materialism and battleism. India, this middle road thing, we can make an approach. And I end up, of course, with this famous thing, Vasudeva Kumbakam, that the whole world is one challenge. Thank you. Thank you, sir. So, uh, friends, we'll have the round of uh, question and answers. Uh, <coughs> thank you for that uh, very comprehensive. Uh, uh, okay. Thank you for that very comprehensive and informative presentation. I was just thinking that, uh, in a sense, uh, it's not the elephant in the room, then the dragon in the room is China. Uh, then, it, then you talk about the East or Act East. And uh, you know, everybody in this room, I'm sure, knows that uh, our bilateral trade with China is close to 100 billion. Actually, a little less than that, about 80, 83, 84 billion. And China is our biggest trading partner. Of course, uh, four fifths of that trade is from we import from China about 64 billion, and we export about 16 billion to that, something like that. This is the figures of last year's 2017. So, and yet, in a sense, the look east is to balance that, you know, preponderance, you might say, the great dominance of China uh, in world affairs, in, in the affairs of the region, in Asia. And it's also a way for us to recover our old neighborhood, our ancient neighborhood, what we used to call Indochina, where Indian culture permeated seamlessly, you know, right till the borders of, well, I think, beyond to, to Kyoto. If you go to Kyoto, it's full of, anyhow. So I think this is a great opportunity. And what we have learned from you, sir, is that key to this expansion is our own Northeast where uh, we have been negligent in many ways, we are hamstrung by a number of issues where also I noticed I was in Assam and people say, you know, people's memories and tempers are short. So unless they get instant action, they're going to be very angry very soon. So we are, we are hamstrung with all that. And before I throw it open, I just want to say one, one thing, that we in the Institute are very Northeast oriented. So you'll be happy that uh, you know, of the many talks that uh, the Aspen and Anta Center proposed to us, uh, I had one or two in mind and some of those people didn't come. I wanted uh, Bajan Pandaji to come here. He was very busy. The first round of our negotiations got scuttled as it was. And then when we saw that Sir had proposed the Northeast, I said, let's take it because there's so many fellows from the Northeast. So in this institute, this uh, Shimla to Shillong corridor, or, uh, or Dibrugad, or Guwahati, whatever, we really believe in that. So with those words, uh, I'll invite our, our senior fellow, Damrudhar Nath, to, to ask the first question. Words. Oh, I am really very impressed to listen from a person that I'm not Actually, I did not know. I have enough sound. <laughs> no, myself, myself actually. Actually, I did not know that he hails from Northeast. And one of my friends, Anita Aziz, she asked me, do you know him? 
I, I simply say that I am interested in the talk, I will be. But uh, perhaps he hates from some other parts of India. I don't know how far he would justify this lecture. Uh, <laughs> you see the Northeast parochialism. No, it's not like no, no, that. No, no, I should tell why. Okay. But only I have so many, hundreds of questions. But the summary is that how does the center prepare Northeast? to look an artist, because uh, I shall tell you one by one. You have certainly visited Ola Sultanas to the extreme border of China. These general people, the much people, the common people, they are very thinly populated, of course. There are certain parts in China, some are looking dark in the evening. Some parts are there where there are lights. You are saying, Gaumra, he will just tell you that those areas where there is no light is India. <laughs> where there is light is China. Mm -hmm. It's very interesting. And, <clears throat> yeah, about the train. We used to buy a bicycle in Dibrugar at 350 rupees. That lasts for four to five years. That is China made. <laughs> and we buy one Indian bicycle at 3,000 rupees. It lasts 30 years. Yeah, yeah. No, no not sir. <laughs> but, but this is how the people are, uh, you can well imagine that the, how we are facing. Our bicycle does not go there. Not because of the border, but because of this. And their bicycle is pouring into the markets of people right. and all around. Because I can buy a bicycle at 350 rupees. And again, I tell you, I have visited Burma on my own, without visa, without visa, I I have visited through the street or road, it is bunch of us. So you just drove? Yes, sir. And I whole day I was visiting the villages in Burma, and in the evening I came back. And I saw there are uh, lines of houses and lines of markets done by people from Northeast who belong to the insurgents. So, <coughs> Uh, how is that, uh, how the center is taking these things uh, seriously to intact, to prepare it? Because when we look at, it is of course a big distance, but when we have to act then the narcissist has to bear the burden of the activist policy. So how should we be prepared to do that? How is the center looking at that point? For example, in 2002, uh, I told you, sir. In 2002, I organized the Dibrugo University and International Seminar on Lucas policy. Besides academicians from uh, uh, this part of the globe, we invited the villagers by the side of these uh, passes. From villagers from Manipur, villagers from Onasan Pradesh, villagers from Assam, they gathered together in thousands, giving slogan, open the road for our purpose, right. open the road. And my proceedings, as I told you, sir. Sindhi was uh, yeah. 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 My proceedings have been taken by the center, then President, our Honorable Abdul Khanab. He took the entire proceedings. After that, what happened, I did not know. That the people demanded that the, the road should be open. Because as he says, from Dibrugar, if it is made an international airport, it is not yet made. From Dibrugar to Beijing, it will take three hours. Three hours three and hours. from Dibrugar to Dibrugar, it will take three and a half hours. Dibrugar to Delhi. Dibrugar to Delhi. So this is how, uh, uh, among the problems, you have also uh, pointed out that there are problems of communication, problems of development, and so many things. And, uh, um, I tell you, when we organized this seminar, I still remember there was an ambassador, A.K. Rai. He is from Guadalajara. He, he died, of course, yeah, yeah. Uh, two years back. He came to give the keynote address. And uh, he very clearly points out that the equality academicians who always point out the negative points. Mm -hmm. For example, the Golden Triangle. We discussed the Golden Triangle in detail. How opium should produce there, how opium should have would pour into the state if the road is open. Okay. Then tourism industry. That Thailand 
and Southeast Asian tourism industry, uh, if it comes to Northeast India, then the entire social ethics will be destroyed. And <coughs> so many negative points were pointed out. As a matter of fact, there are so many debates, discourses, contradictions, opinions, etc. But now, <coughs> my final question is this, sir. People of Northeast in general want perhaps the opening, want perhaps the activist policy to be materialized. This is the view of Northeast people. And you also express the same thing. How the Northeast is made to face to prepare for the activist policy? What exactly is your opinion on the role of this sector? Thank you, sir. You see, the, okay, let me put it this way. Uh, when the Lucas policy was started, uh, the idea was basically, okay, fine, to, to develop close relations with Southeast Asia, ASEAN countries. But also, of course, since the reality is that the geography is such that the land connectivity with these ASEAN countries is the Northeast, so you have to develop the Northeast. Now, what has happened is, Yes, the rest of India in terms of trade and so many things has happened with ASEAN countries, but the actual, the actual development of Northeast didn't take place, even though the announcement of so many crores of rupees, 10% for budget and all that stuff. Uh, I don't think the center had the time to really monitor why this happened. Okay, now, uh, oh, what about this? And the states have, they were living in the whole world. Now with the at least policy, what has happened, there's a slight, a slight uh, distinction here. You see, first of all, this prime minister, he is the, um, what is this called in the RSS? Uh, Prachar. Pracharak. He was Pracharak for the entire Northeast for a very long time. So he understands, he knows everything about Northeast. Okay? And that is one that, that is one reason so he knows he really wants to develop. And that is a reality. He took that is why he visited, took more interest. But again, you see, to me, that is what the center can do. But this, this but the state should also do their part. <coughs> you see, the state should do their part. That now no, for every let's put it. Uh, now, the, I remember when the Mr. Modi came to Shillong, we arranged a marathon, and I was running with the Dharma Minister, uh, Dr. Jinju Singh. And he was telling me, uh, you know we want to have a sports university in Imphal, and we have the money for it, but the Chief Minister, he says, no, take it to my constituency. Mm -hmm. So, he says, that doesn't make sense, because it has to be in Imphal, because that's the, the, the capital, cent more central. And Manipur is the leading state in sports for India. He said, this delay, and he said, these things like this, and then, so things like this, you know. And then even land acquisition for anything, which I said. Uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's For this Umrah airport, it, it's, it's because of the land acquisition. It took a lot of time, and the, the state government didn't take enough interest. And in fact, when I told the chief minister also, I said, we're talking like this. And he gave me some background to it. There was a conflict of interest. They paid money somebody. Anyway, the fact of the matter is that they didn't really have time for it. So the state government also has done its part. So uh, I, that's why whichever state government recognizes that. But you see, the one thing I notice about the state government is they, they oh, sorry, Mike. One thing they, I notice about the state government is that they are only interested to get the funds with them. They can do whatever they like. If it is something which is coming from the center, which is a, a central project, they are not. They, they don't take much interest. I see that even with the with the health program, for instance. Now this rural health mission. My own wife is in charge. Is is with them. My wife is a doctor. And the way they monitor from Delhi, there's a person. The way they have to submit the report, but that's being taken only by that person. The state government doesn't take interest in it. Same thing with education, same thing with agriculture. You know? So they just want the funds to themselves. Let the grant come, we will do what we like. This is basically the, one of the problems. In fact, there was a time when uh, Tarun Nobel was chief minister of Assam where he made the statement 
He said that, you know, forget about all this NEC and all this lackeys. I have, I have an equation with the Prime Minister. I'll get the money. <laughs> so it's personalized. So this is why. This is, this is something. That's why I said even the Japanese now, indirectly, they're telling me that, you know, if you people don't respond quickly enough, you'll get cut up. Because this is the way we are. So, uh, so this is this is so we are neither here nor there. It's it's, uh, it's, uh, it's something on the centre. You can't expect them to say that they can be like behave like a schoolmaster where you have to do, sit down and up. At the end of the day, it's it's, it's you benefit, correct? Yes, sir. So this is this is the situation where we are. So this is the very good answer. Not just to prepare itself. Lord, this is a corrupted religion. I tell you, sir, there is a saying that if you want to see the Mercedes, go to Itanagar. <laughs> Mercedes cars, you go to Itanagar, you will see Mercedes cars there. And, and in Ornasal Pradesh, you will see the palaces. Yes, palaces of our three ministers. Estates, oh, are estates. And no road. But no road. No road. No road. No road. Even to the, go to the university. Even to go to the Canada, you will have to walk, or you will have to go by the river, or there is no, no cross communication. So, we people are really responsible for that. I will call it out as well. No, no, it will be, it will be edited. It will be all edited. You know, all controversial you know, things. What I, certain things which I say, yes, is not, yeah, yeah, they are not just for to give you an understanding how things are. They are not for broadcast. Now, actually. General V.K. Singh, who is the Minister of State now, in he was also Minister for Donna. Mm -hmm. Now I met him when he was a minister. He is also an but he was also minister for Donna. Donna minister. Now he also he was posted as the general there also in Northeast right from the time as Colonel Brigadier and all that. So he knew the, the place very well. And one of the things he wanted to do is to be stinted with some of his politicians. Mm -hmm. He was removed. Mm -hmm. After that, he, 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 they took him out of the Donna place because he was going after some people. So, uh, one second. So, I think. But don't report this, yeah, no, 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 no. See, I think what's really wonderful is that uh, we say now, you know, act is policy, but it is a question of paralysis and inaction. But what has emerged is a kind of collective malaise that prevails, and nobody knows how to make the breakthrough. But speaking about, I mean, we all like to outrage and complain. And I'll also add my own little. One of my friends has become an OSD to the CM of one of the northeastern states. And a central university there had to be shut down. And the reason is that they couldn't account for almost 500 crores. Mm. And I said, 500 crores here, we, <coughs> Benchenji sitting here, we account for, you know, every pesa, 10 rupees, whatever. So he said, you know, boxes come, they are built like computers. You order, there's a small lab, which cannot even seat 10 people. You order, you order 1,000 computers for a small lab. The boxes come and there's no computer inside. It's all, and they are received, they are... Uh, so we are dealing with a strange situation, you know. It's like a, uh, what you may call magic realism of Gabriel Garcia Marquez <laughs> or Salman Rushdie. But anyhow. We'll have some more questions. Go ahead. Thank you, sir. Noor, I am student of foreign affairs, and I will take up much understanding of no but uh, what I will What's your, what, what, what is that? History, I teach his history in okay. a sir. So I have uh, two things, two questions, rather. First is, uh, I, I didn't find the Rohingya issue in, featured in your uh, life. A Rohingya issue, uh, because uh, what I personally read from newspaper, it was a diplomatic failure to certain extent of uh, government of India. So I want your comments on that. And second is, uh, with China, we have trade imbalance. With Asia also, like you pointed out, $32 billion. We uh, just export and $38 billion, we import that. So uh, with uh, two, magic programs of government of India, make in India, and skill India. So, uh, how, how do we manage that trade imbalancing? And uh, this is, I, I want your comments on both of these issues. Thank you. Uh, let me start with the trade, trade first, my comments. Sir. Uh, you see, the, right now, 
In fact, India was picking up growth. Okay? Uh, of course, a lot of media publicity has also been given to it, because China was going down. But don't forget that China base is, is much higher. Is much higher. Okay, so you know, so don't compare. But it's a good news. It's a good news. But we are caught in this situation today, which, because the, one of the fundamental problems about India economy is we spend 75% of our resource on import of oil. oil. Understand? And that determines a lot of things to do then. Then on top of that is the dollar is going up, the rupee. Okay? And that affects our prices. Today, why are, why are most of the airlines are facing problems now? Because the price of oil. Okay? And you cannot hike the, the, the fare, if they hike the fare, again it will, you know, people will not fly them. Okay? But it's, a, it's also a source of income for the state also. So oh, we are yes. overcharging it. It's the main making cow taxation. No, correct, correct. That's, that, that's correct. So, so that, that's one part of it. But uh, the rupee value, the rupee is also going, you see, it's going down. Huh? It's, you see, it may help certain areas of exports, but on the whole, when the import is more than export, then it affects your, it, 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 it leads to balance larger, the, the balance of payment becomes larger. So this is, this is a, a challenge for us. And, and another thing is, if you look at it, are you following the Reserve Bank thing? Mm -hmm. You're you following it? It's affecting a lot of you know, the, the in, for foreign institu institutional institutions, mm -hmm. they are affected by that a lot, a lot. So it's not coming in the way it is. You are right. Initially also, I got very excited by Make in India, because for me, representing India abroad, when I only see Make in China everywhere, it affects me. Mm -hmm. So I really got excited by that. Make in India, Connect in India, Digital yeah, India, yeah. but you don't know, we have to talk about it now, because mm -hmm. you know, it's taking a different direction altogether. So, so really, even in trade part of it, we are finding a lot of difficulties there because to, uh, uh, it depends uh, how much. What, what is the main trade items of India? Engineering goods, garments, gem and jewelry, and and these are some of the items. Handicrafts. Okay. Now, are we able to? We are getting something on IT. We're getting something, but now it's not the same again because the technology has also uh, the, the, there's a lot of changing in technology where our people are not skilled enough. So you have this situation today. Uh, skill development, it's a good thing, <coughs> but still, unless the foreign companies come and see that you have skills that you have in China or you have in Thailand or you have in Indonesia, they will not come. So this this is. This is again a situation which we face. So it affects the entire trade, you know, the entire trade system. Coming to Rohingya. Rohingya, there are two, three things to it. Two things basically, let me. One is the, the, the Rohingya problem within India, which they are already here. We have about 30,000 of them. The other is the Rohingya issue between Myanmar and Bangladesh. Now, about internal problem, 30,000, I think, for a country of 1.2 billion, what is 30,000? Even 60, even one, even one back. If they are, I think we can deal with it if we have to. But whether we politically we have that political will to deal with it, that's a different thing. Uh, because India is what? What is India supposed to be? We talk about this vision, this philosophy, which are laid down by a, you know the person who. Because the last the last word before thank you. Okay. Very now now. But the, the, the more difficult part is the, the, the uh, Myanmar Bangladesh. Because we are not, we are not, uh, we are telling everything, we are using the right politically correct language. But we are not going strong enough with, 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 with uh, Rohingya about, sorry, about Myanmar, yeah. about repatriation of Rohingyas back to Myanmar. Now, why do we, we find that situation is because we have our own issues in Myanmar. Now, for instance, today, if we can solve the insurgents' problem who are hiding in Myanmar, 
you can see we will, we will, that is a very, very big problem for us. Yeah. Because, yeah, the MSCM, Kaplan, is still a very major force in, in Myanmar, and they have a ceasefire uh, agreement with the government of Myanmar, which is still essentially ruled by the army. We expected that, and this Aung San Suu Kyi has become helpless. She's not able to deliver, because can't blame her also. Because she's in, you know, she, she's, she does, that's how it is, the system in Myanmar. So we have this situation. I didn't, I didn't uh, mention in my presentation with Myanmar, for instance, one of the reasons we cannot finish the trial trail highway is because our insurgents are hiding in those regions. No, Sakai region. Sakai. That's it. Okay? So we have these issues, you know. The, the, Sometime, I don't know, that maybe our own democracy becomes a problem for us. Good. We'll take a few more questions. We have to end around six. So raise your hands. All those who want to ask questions, we'll start with you. Introduce yourself briefly to the ambassador. Yeah, hello, sir. I'm Reena here. I'm an MPhil student at the University of Delhi, and I am writing my dissertation on South Asian regionalism. So uh, my question is that uh, VRI initiative is there, and it crosses through POK. That is the reason we are not... Uh, uh, POK? Pakistan, Pakistan occupied the... Oh, you're talking about the... the, the so you, you were saying you will talk about it later. So one, the question about that, that should we, uh, because we are losing out on the trade benefits because mm -hmm. of not participating even in the meetings and mm -hmm. the deliberations on it. So your take on that. And the second question is also about the sub-state diplomacy you were talking about. So there is a little, or like the national security issue comes up when the states uh, at the state level start diplomatic initiatives with other states. So, like, on your take on that, because national security problem <coughs> occurs, because in this part of the world, obviously China is, like, aspiring to be the great part, hence it's it building is, infrastructure. It is not aspiring, it is. It, 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 because oh, hence, Thank you. We'll take a few more questions and you can get, get a comprehensive uh, I hope I remember what you asked. No, we we'll remember some of us before. <laughs> yes, any, any other questions from that side? We always balance the left and the right. Any other questions? Any other questions? Shadila? Um, not really, Aaron, but then uh, lived in Tripura for uh, six, seven years. And then, I mean, you did not mention much that the corridor which is going to be built up between Bangladesh and Tripura is going to become a corridor of, you know, this United States policy. But then, uh, Prabhu, you are very right, and you... You are talking about the Kolkata Kundi? Yeah. 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 And then also, you mentioned about this, uh, uh, the act within the North East policy. Uh -huh. That is all very important to talk about before <laughs> act East policy. You pick up that, actually. Yeah. That's <laughs> a good point. Okay, any other questions? Yeah. Yes, go ahead. Hello, sir. I'm Anil, the student of Media and Communication from University of Hyderabad. My question is that you, it is obvious that we know how China is central to India's foreign policy. But if you take the recent happenings of Doklam, so how do you see this, uh, what we call, do you think that there is something which is not very amusing in terms of maintaining the, the right kind of bilateral ties between India and China when it comes to foreign policy? Second question is the very reference to your mention of NRC. So as a diplomat, how do you see that how justifiable it is to a commoner who has been staying in some place for 40 years, 30 years, suddenly getting discarded from that place? Thank you. Any other questions? Go ahead, Manisha. Uh, I think uh, my experience for North East comes from not many sources. Like, uh, people who are posted in the army on the border area, those who are constantly interacting with them. Second is from the intelligence people of army again, who are like the main officer lines. And the third is students who come from Northeast to the university. And then my most broad experience, which I gained was from the Yano there. Where in from was the from Yano the train. The university was sending a train to Northeast. And there were 1,000 students who were actually from the age group of 17 to 20. The problem what I faced personally, because I was organizing all those
those things for the Northeast. Was that one state is not ready to coordinate with the other. Similarly, there is a problem of the inter-tribal conflict, and people are not ready to come on one single platform in order to develop the entire Northeast. So I think uh, there was nothing to deal with the same thing in your presentation as well. So I would just like you to hint on that. Is, is there anything possible? Because when I talk about border area, there was another Janudar which we planned for the border areas of India. When we spoke to the borders of Bikane, they were ready to coordinate on Jaisalmer border as well. They were ready to coordinate on the border of, you, you can say, Amritsar as well. But that kind of coordination was completely absent. When we talked to the CM office, they are like, we don't know. Better you coordinate. And they are not ready to give you anything explicitly about their own region as well. So, can you please give some brief hint on that? You have one second, last. Your last point, then he Visa, visa from the Chinese side, staple visa. Yeah. Okay. Now, no more questions. Sir will answer. Then we okay. wind up. In whatever way I remember, I'll try some to give some broad answers. My own suggestion also. You see, a lot of these problems within states, not for the states. Uh, the one of the to, to me the the less agencies you have the better uh, now let's say that is why ideally for me what i suggested in fact i wrote one article also about that the NEC, the northeastern council uh, was set up by mrs gandhi in 1921 uh, ideally you should allow the institution to grow it, 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 it's, it, the whole India of coordinating, the whole idea of coordinating among the states should have been done by that agency. Now, but that didn't happen. Uh, because of, you know, whatever it is. And now, uh, the, 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 you have these common interstate problems. <coughs> Even Forget the disputes or borders. Even a thing like tourism. Why should why can't we coordinate on tourism? In the in the Fiki CRI thing which we have, we we try to say that, you know, why don't we coordinate on there are many countries. The, when I was in Latin America, I there are areas there where you go to the Amazon, especially in the Amazon, where you don't know which is but the border, we don't know which part is Colombia, which part is Brazil, which part is Peru. Because these are all part of the Amazon. And when you go as a tourist, it facilitates you to visit everywhere there, even though they are different countries. But that's the whole idea about for us. For states, we are fine so difficult. So, but uh, a tourist who comes, he doesn't like to come only to one state. He wants to come to as many states as possible. We are not really able to deal with that, even a thing like tourism. Forget about the disputes we have about borders. So we have suggested, in fact, under the Fiki thing, like the North East uh, Tourism Development Corporation to essentially to, because this is one area to develop, to really bring this together, just one part of it. Because for anything you do, you cannot do everything. You pick one uh, core area, and then you develop on that, and that can become a kind of a model for the rest. Okay? So this is... This is broadly which I say, it's the multiple agency there. Let the NEC also do it, but it, it doesn't happen because today they have, they have made the Home Minister the chairman of NEC. He doesn't have the time. So you have the, and then you have the donor ministry on top. They are controlling everything. But they're not, if they are able to do this coordination work of the state together, as you said, be a border dispute, be anything, that should be the way it is. But it's not happening. Yeah, because something which is very academic, when the so, students are coming to collect the land sample, to collect the sample of the, you know, uh, many other things, so that there can be a push to the area, it can be done. I mean, there is a complete lapse, and the outsider feels like handicapped. And then somebody from the ministry is telling you how you will pay the money to the insurgents that you know better. Please carry a cash. So, I and mean, that becomes very difficult. You know, this is, even this today, in fact, uh, because let's say you have once your own political party come into the state, 
then you listen more to what the chief minister says from there or you know what your own party says than what is of interest in general to the public this is so this collision of interest you see uh, between party interests and government interests and public interests is collision so you're not really able to act concretely on a particular thing this is this is a situation so i let's let's take first just Okay, forget everything else. A road infrastructure which everybody will benefit. That wherever the national highway authority is. But the insurgents won't. You see, we have to deal with that. So they'll block it. I'm strongly on the state governments that if you don't deliver, block this is what will go ahead. You see? Take out tax. But this is we are not able to do that. So again, this conflicting of interest is is so much. It's uh, I don't know. Now. Uh, I, I hope I, you know, I suggested. But one thing is, the the the, the less agencies you have, the better. Not so many, everybody. And in our system, which is, you know, it's sad that only when the PMO acts for everything, yeah. then things move. Why? Because the PMO it means it comes from PM. <coughs> it's a pity. <laughs> Uh, some other, you know. Uh, I have a question on uh, that border, yes, one, yes. one border kind of defense strategies. DOR should we participate? Uh, yeah, she also asked that, no? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, now, okay, coming about the BRI, yeah, right. one, there are six corridors. One corridor is the CPEC, China Pakistan Economic Corridor. On matter of principle, we have an objective to it, which is fine. But the question is that there are so many <coughs> other projects. Do we have to plug everything together? The point is that we are doing business with China. Now we are talking about Doklam. That stalemate with Doklam took place. There is, uh, uh, he comes, he, he is a lawyer, but his, he, what he does is to, he helps Chinese companies to invest in India. And there is a lot of demand for it. And he comes to IIM for lecture on China. They are very interested in that. Now, on the day the Doklam thing was resolved, uh, the Indian media here was uh, China with you and all that stuff. It's not like that. Mm -hmm. The China press itself, he reads uh, China newspapers regularly. He tells me, he was in my house mm -hmm. sitting, and he says, China says, no, it doesn't, it doesn't work that way. But leave that aside, Doklam aside. On that, just one week before that, India ordered a large cross of equipments for railways from China, mm -hmm. cross of equipments for the telecommunication, because without that supply, we won't be able to go forward. Mm -hmm. I mean, what are you talking about? You won't do business here, you won't do the business there. I mean, this, this idea of even boycotting Chinese products is absurd. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, your, 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 your dia, your Ganesh is coming from India. China. Christmas tree is coming China. from India. China. 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 Sorry. And uh, so, what are we talking about? For me, it is there. It's a, and these students in IIM are interested in it. They are gaining something out of it. You cannot avoid them. What is there in doing business with them? So, but we have this syndrome that, you know, and to me, I don't know what will happen in 20 years, 40 years. I'm not a uh, you know, I cannot predict. But if you are interested in business to do up, because you cannot avoid them. Either way, why don't you do business with them? So my idea is that some, of course, there are uh, fears of saying that China will have a debt problem. Mm -hmm. But they're not, now they're smart. They are making, in any case, China is coming to Bhutan. Yeah. I was in Bhutan recently. You know, Bhutan, it doesn't, it, it, can only, it cannot have diplomatic relations with all the other countries. Mm. Only except India and the South countries and the ASEAN countries. But it doesn't have a with, with, with US or China or any other. But the China foreign minister has been there. <coughs> he said, we are ready to help you. What do you want from us? Now, they are coming, they are coming with the railways to Kathmandu. Yes. Yeah. They are already in Bangladesh. Yeah. And they have got the Sri Lanka. And if you talk to the Sri Lanka, I was in Sri Lanka by the way. If you talk to the Sri Lankans, he said, why did you ask India to come, you didn't come? Mm -hmm. No, but they are in debt there with that Hanam Toro. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So now we have equity, no? So that's right. Yeah. Yeah. 
So you can say anything you want, but they, they, that's it. You, they, in, in other countries which I serve, they say, you know, we don't only want China, we want India also, but you are too slow. And China, in most countries, they are there by default. Because other countries don't come forward. So, large, large, you know, and for us to say that, no, China, we, you know, you cannot go to the Northeast because of security reason, and you want to do business with them. And, and, and I don't think it's a, it's a correct approach to me. It's, uh, even academicians, what allow academicians at least to come? Yes. Okay, fine, you don't allow projects. What is then allowing academicians to come and participate in universities? Let's listen to them. Are we so scared? We have no confidence in ourselves? We have a number of uh, Chinese spies in JNU. <coughs> Many of them dress up like uh, monks. So it's happening. You don't want to allow them, but they're very much there. <laughs> and they meet in our coffee house, and some of them took photos with me as a leading, so-called leading Indian intellectual. <laughs> that their spy network has penetrated. I said, your contact with me will only be as far as this photo is concerned. <laughs> After that, nothing more. Even in my town, I have it's like a tourist, of, uh, because there is a Buddha school. There, so so there. China is way ahead of us in many respects. But anyhow, we have to call this wonderful anything, meeting. Anything else I have to answer? Uh, you can continue. You can continue later because six o'clock. Yeah, we have something else. But uh, thank you very much. I only want to say one thing: that one of the big lessons from this talk is that before you look or act east. Look and act northeast. <laughs> so first, let's do that. So no, I said uh, act yeah. with the northeast policy. Yeah, yeah. That's what I'm saying. So this is a very big take she, she said it also. Yeah, yeah. She also yeah. said it. And again and again, this is coming. You can't neglect the northeast and hope to act east, number one. Number two, you see, in, so to speak, mainland India, we tend to club the northeast. Yes. And now we've added second, you know, one more state has been added. But the fact is the northeast, it's a very diverse area with possibly less in common. You can't even travel. You have to come back to Guwahati. You have to come back to Assam. You can't cross from one state to another. Exactly. Interconnectivity. So we have a we have created a false homogenization, which is the reason for some of the difficulties that we are facing. That every region is so different, and the interconnectedness is itself something we haven't succeeded in building. Third, as Sir said. Everyone wants money from the center. Nobody wants accountability. And the schizophrenia is everybody hates the center. So you can't have it, you can't have it both ways. And uh, finally, somebody mentioned substate diplomacy. Modi did it from Gujarat. He's built very good relations yeah, yeah, with, so with Xi Jinping. Yeah, right. yeah. So it can be done. You don't deal with security, deal with trade. In <coughs> I now request the convener of our fellows, Ajayji, to give a vote of thanks in Hindi to sir. Uh, respected uh, Pranthi sir, uh, respected uh, Adhari, uh, sorry, Adhari uh, Rudi sir, you have come to our उत्तर पूर्व भारत है हमारा उसको समझने और समझाने में जो हम सब की मदद की जो लुकिस्ट की बात आप कर रहे थे लुकिस्ट हमारा तो आपको बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद हम सभी की तरफ से संस्थान की तरफ से और फिलोज काउंसिल का कन्वीनर होने की वजह से हमारी तरफ से भी संस्थान की तरफ से पुनः सर आपको बहुत बहुत मारकबात ध Yeah.